The response from this event was really overwhelming as everyone left the event bowled over by David's theory. My thanks to David again for such a candid interview. Next up was something completely different as we moved to the life of Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen. Discussing the controversial life of one of the greatest rulers England has ever had was Alison Weir, the best-selling female historian in the UK who has recreated the lives of medieval women in all her novels. However, the focus was firmly on Elizabeth tonight and how she consciously aimed to preserve her status as the Virgin Queen despite the frequent attempts of ambassadors and princes to woo her. As she signed books after the event, I swam by to chat with Alison. Alison, thank you very much for joining us tonight and congratulations on a riveting tour. Thank you very much. Uh, I enjoyed you, it. How do you find it? Yeah, did you enjoy it? Tomorrow? I love it. I love doing that yeah. because it's a passion for history and Elizabeth is a, is a, is a fascinating character mm. and she's a dynamic character and to be able to bring her alive through reading out her own quotes and her letters and, that, and just talking about her generally, I, I, I find it, you know, it's always a thrill every time because it's a new audience mm. and I've done that talk many, many times. Really? The book came out in 1998 and that's how old the talk is but I haven't done it a lot in recent years obviously I do it from time to time because people always want to know about Elizabeth <laughs> yeah, sure. and she features in a lot of my books so um, yes it was, it was great fun so how much did Elizabeth play on the, on the role of version, the status of the version Queen? very much so because it also protected her from having to you know having to marry and it uh, it also replaced in her subject's mind a female deity like the, the, the you know the Virgin Mary and I think she was very aware of this that's why we get the Queen portrayed almost as a goddess you know in that she felt she I think she consciously filled that niche I mean, how revolutionary was it back then to, it was, to, to declare it was unnatural for yeah. a woman to, 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 to reject marriage you know I mean I thought it was just maidenly modesty but it wasn't in her case it was far more than that but no it was thought that a woman had no identity but through her husband you know and, and the, you know a woman on her own was, was, a, was, a, was a, almost an aberration of nature I mean but how strong was was the evidence that to suggest that she did see other men that uh, she indeed wasn't the queen? It's, there's no actual evidence that she, not, not evidence that anyone would believe, mm. apart from the gossip that I read out some of the gossip, <laughs> um, that there's no evidence that she actually did go all the way with any, any of her suitors and that, you know, got pretty close to it, I should think. Yeah. But I just think there was this psychological block against marriage and all that she entailed. And don't forget, She's a bastard, a heretic, and a usurper in the eyes of Catholic Europe. Had she born a bastard, my God, what would have happened to her? You know, I mean, she didn't dare risk it. Her reputation would have been in the dust. She wouldn't have, she wouldn't have lasted. Look at Mary Queen of Scots. Sexual immorality brought, perceived, brought her down. Mm. But I mean, how close do you think she did get to, uh, say, marrying Dudley? Um, I, mean, was she, was I she think that? she played the game. I think she affected to be close to it, but she knew it she wasn't going to do it. Really? That's what it looks like, yes. It, she got ever so close to it. She got even the, the Spanish ambassador, who was a bishop, to actually say he'd marry them on a barge one evening, and uh, Dudley got all excited and that, you know. And she, really? Oh, yeah. She knew how to keep him on a string. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you've been passionate about the Elizabethan for... Oh, for since God, the mid-60s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why is that? Because it's a dynamic era, because it's a... She's a wonderful character. It's not just Elizabeth era, it's the whole Tudor era. And it's the first era in which we've got wonderful documentary evidence of the private lives of models. We've got a great visual record in portraits, in palaces, you know, the magnificence of the age. And it's, it's an age of great colour, um, of tragedy and turbulence. And in the religious conflict, it, you know, it's, it's an age without parallel in our history. I mean, and over the years of writing, have you grown attached to Elizabeth? Do you like her? Yes, I do. But I do when I do write about her historically, then I do step back. I've got to look at her objectively. She, I mean, yeah, she, I mean, she, she allowed her soldiers to starve in the streets after the Armada. So you could, you know, you could, you could criticise her. But I was stressing more of the positive, trying to paint a po character portrait of her. She wasn't all good, I can yeah. tell you that. But there was a lot to like about her. And lastly, before you go, um, what are your thoughts on, on the festival? Wonderful. Stuff, yeah? It's great. This is going to be up with Cheltenham and Absolutely. Edinburgh and the Greats. I mean, it already is. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alison, fantastic. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you for you. joining Thank us. Thank you and, very uh, much. Nice to meet you. An area of history I don't think I'll ever get bored of. Many thanks to Alison for her words there. And apologies for the background wind. 
there's really no getting away from the blustery start to CVHF. So, only three days remain of this year's festival, but what historical treats await? Tomorrow's stellar lineup includes Ian and Victoria Hislop, Michael Wood, and Adam Nicholson, whilst we will also be deciding who the greatest Briton of all time should be. Will it be William Shakespeare, Alfred the Great, Winston Churchill, Charles Darwin, or Elizabeth I? Chalk Valley shall decide. In the meantime, you can spend your time wisely by browsing the Chalk Valley website, as photos and reviews from the festival are all online now. Go online at cvhf.org.uk. So, thanks again for listening to our podcast tonight. I have been Zander Drury, and until tomorrow, good night.